Hi friends, Prepared Suburbanite here. I'm going to go off topic a little bit. This is really, this one is not going to be about uh, prepping, preparations, survival, gear reviews, anything like that. But I wanted to share some thoughts about what's going on in the government with respect to the Affordable Care Act slash Obamacare and what's happening with the House plan and the Senate plan. Not many folks truly understand that eligibility for the subsidies under the Affordable Care Act is strictly based on income. It does not take into consideration the assets that an individual may own. Doesn't count real estate, doesn't count checking accounts, doesn't count savings accounts, doesn't count individual retirement accounts, investment programs, anything like that. It's strictly based on income. So an astute observer that has ultimate control over their income can reduce their income to a point where they can maximize the subsidy that they receive for Obamacare to cover their insurance. If the circumstances and the situations work out the way they can and the way they would be to benefit a particular group of individuals, they're going to take advantage of it once they figure it out that there is no means test beyond income that's going to drive that subsidy. And those subsidies um, are pretty hefty. Um, some folks, and, and I know because I have to get my insurance through Obamacare, I know that the subsidies and that the monthly premiums for even a silver plan can be fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month for an individual. And then if you get family, it's, it's probably going to be even more than that. I don't thankfully have to worry about that because the kids are all grown and gone out of the house now. The plans that are coming up from the House of Representatives and the plan that was announced yesterday by the uh, uh, Republicans in the Senate are not repealing Obamacare. All they've done is ground off some of the sharp edges, moved some of the transfer of wealth payments, and they're trying to shine it up basically lipstick on a pig to make sure that there's going to be some sort of government involvement in the health care insurance business. The government has no need or no right to be involved in the health care insurance business. The free market really is going to drive what needs to be done in that healthcare market if it was allowed to, but right now it can't. Programs like Medicare, like Medicaid, are covering so many people and they demand so much from those programs and those programs are so sacred to those individuals that the federal government doesn't dare challenge them. Yeah, they chip away at them here, they chip away at them there, they change a little bit over here, they change a little bit over there, but the basic format remains the same, and that's covering millions of people around the country. The rest of the marketplace gets their coverage through their employer. Some employers are very generous with the benefit that they provide. I know some that are still providing 100% of the premium coverage for their employees. There are some that are that are still in the um, 85 to 90, 95% premium coverage for their employees with just a little bit coming out of your pocket, um, out of your paycheck for um, the group coverage that you enjoy through your place of employment. Well, I guess that's good, but let's talk about what, what the insurance is really trying to cover. Health insurance is not like auto insurance. Auto insurance is there to cover it if you're um, if you get in an accident and you've got damage to your vehicle and you got to get it fixed. 
yeah, you can take it to the uh, auto mechanic, the repair shop. He'll put a new fender on, he'll put a new bumper on, whatever. There's going to be some coverage provided by the insurance company and maybe some out-of-pocket uh, uh, deductible amount that you may have to pay, whether it's for the windshield or the bumper or a broken headlight or a broken grill or whatever. If you total your car, yeah, you just get a check in the mail. There you go. Now go buy another car or use that against buying another car. It may not cover everything. But it's there in case you have some sort of catastrophic loss, something that's bigger than normal. Health insurance works like that in that arena. So if you have a heart attack and you need to have triple bypass surgery and you've got health insurance, chances are the majority of that cost is going to be covered by your insurance, whether it's through the marketplace, whether you've got Medicare, whether you've got Medicaid, um, the group health insurance through your employer, um, or if you've got coverage through the uh, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, it's going to be covered. The big difference between that and the auto insurance, uh, uh, personal property insurance market is that routine maintenance isn't covered under the auto insurance or the personal property insurance marketplace. We're getting our house painted. That's routine maintenance as far as I'm concerned. Do you think my health, my, my homeowner's insurance is going to cover the paint job on the house? No. Now if the house burns down, yep, I expect that they'll come in and uh, take, a, take an assessment of what we've got here and uh, we'll get a check and we'll be rebuilding or whatever. But that's what the homeowner's insurance is for. That's what auto insurance is for. But when you get down to routine maintenance, there's no coverage for that. You can't get coverage for getting your oil changed. You can't get coverage for uh, replacing a burned out headlight or a tail light. Um, that can, it just doesn't happen in, in those marketplaces. And that's why the costs are so low. If we had an access to do that in health insurance, if we had the ability to either join a group or negotiate on an individual basis or just watch the ad on TV that says, hey, you need routine maintenance on your body, you need annual physicals, you need immunizations, you need shots, you need uh, urgent care visits, um, that kind of stuff with your physician, um, come to us. We, we can cover you for 50 bucks a month, 75 bucks a month. However it's going to work out, there, there will be an, a market that's going to develop that will be very competitive across the lines as long as the federal government stays out of that environment. So if we trim the health insurance coverage down to just what's meaningful, what you need insurance for, and you can pull that health insurance out of the routine maintenance functions, we're going to add dozens and dozens and dozens of years to our ability to continue to fund what's going on. Neither the House plan nor the Senate plan is going to address any of this. This is too much of a radical idea. But I think it's something that we need to really consider and that we need to start pushing. Talk to your congressmen, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, and see what kind of a reaction you're going to get. And I'd be interested to find out in the comments below if you've considered this, if you think it's a good idea, if you don't think it's a good idea. I think we should separate routine wellness visits, health care, annual physicals, immunizations and all that from coverage in the health insurance marketplace. Separate it entirely. Let that become a free market enterprise. Let companies come up that, that can um, negotiate better deals with groups of physicians or groups of uh, other medical providers to provide the kind of service that you need for wellness and separate that from what you really need insurance for and that's like the inpatient admission, the outpatient surgery, those kinds of things that could break the bank. We should be responsible enough as individuals to take care of the routine maintenance. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always. I'm out for now and see you in the next video.